Hello, good evening and welcome to uh, Eloquent English Enterprise once again. Um, before I start off with my video today, I'd again like to uh, very humbly state that I am no authority as far as English language goes. And this small effort is just to uh, highlight a few errors which I have noticed recently in my interaction with people physically in person and also online when I've been attending webinars. So I very uh, emphatically state the fact that uh, I'm actually uh, not a, a perfect person who can speak English in a perfect manner, but it's just the uh, experience I've uh, gained over the last few years, uh, last few decades, I mean, uh, three decades that uh, I feel I can at least bring out those errors which my students have been committing. So uh, today I'm back with uh, a few words which are usually used in the wrong context or they are used uh, in a way where they should not be used. So uh, coming to a few statements first which I feel are not grammatically correct. So the first one is I have uh, been uh, following a few matrimonial uh, groups and uh, most of the parents write the following line share me all details or share me the pics of the prospective candidate now share me means please share me the correct way to ask for details or pictures would be share the pictures and details of the candidate with me Share me means I have to be shared with somebody, which is not possible. So the correct way is please share the pictures and bio data of your son or daughter with me. On the same platform, another error I've noticed looking a suitable match for looking for a suitable match for my son or my daughter, not looking a match looking for a match we usually forget these small little details another error which even english speaking individuals and teachers i have noticed have committed is it may possible it may possible to do this it may possible this could happen it may be possible or may be possible this could happen so may possible is not the correct way it has to be may be possible it may be possible listening music my hobby is listening music mujhe sangeet sunna pasand hai hum usko literally uh, translate kar dete hain and i very categorically remember when i was doing my bed my teacher my lecturer had very uh, clearly told the entire class that whenever you have to translate anything from Hindi to English, do not do a literal translation. It would be full of mistakes. Uh, I'll give you a hilarious example which she had given. In the times of need, I fall back upon my friends. Mujhe zarurat ke samay apne doston pe girne ki zarurat padti hai. So that sounds funny, right? So literal translations are not allowed. Similarly, listening music is wrong. We listen to music. So my hobby is listening to music. When we talk of subjects, like for example, what subject you want to take. So you can take history, you can take geography, you can take science, you can take maths. But what people say is you can have a history, a geography, a science, a English. We cannot use the article before these subjects. It's wrong. It's grammatically incorrect. So it's not a history, a geography, a science, a psychology, a economics or an economics. No, it has to be. You can talk about history, geography, English, science, psychology, economics, sociology, whatever. So this article a or the is not to be used before any subject. Another error which most of the people make is when they, when they uh, make a sentence or when they speak something, they usually use the participle form of a verb. Like for example, we were not hoping, she was saying, 
they were expecting so that's not the correct way of speaking english it has to be we did not hope not we were not hoping we didn't hope for a certain thing she was saying no she said they were expecting no they expected similarly when students go up on the stage and they have to present a speech or something in the morning assembly they say i am standing before you that is not correct i stand before you today to express my views on the topic and then you go ahead i am standing before you not correct today i stand before you or i stand before this august audience that is correct another thing which i'm sure most of you would have also heard is why you say that why she did that why you say that is not correct why did you say that or why did she do that so why you and why she cannot come together why did you say that or why did she have to say a certain thing so these were a few errors which i've just recently noticed now since i still have time i'll come to uh, words which are generally mixed up i mean one is used in the place of another and i'll take those uh, few examples uh, some of them are pairs and some are more than two like for example center and middle now people will say what's the difference center and middle are just the same but no in english usage they are used or their function is different like for example center is the exact point which is in the middle of say a circle or a square like put uh, this hanky or put this handkerchief or place this chair in the center of this room middle is indefinite and it can be used in an in, in a abstract manner also not just indefinite it can be used in an abstract manner like i had to leave in the middle of my meeting no middle of my meeting it's not the center meeting itself is a is it's an abstract noun so i had to leave in the middle of my meeting or i found myself in the middle of nowhere not center of nowhere not in the center of the meeting center is the exact point like um, the center of the circle okay some physical object which has a particular midpoint or the center point now center also is uh, written in two different ways c e n t r e and c e n t e r so often there's confusion now c e n t r e is the center the the point which i just mentioned but when we use c e n t e r then it is a study center it is uh, a community center so a place where people meet so that is a c e n t e r a center now coming to one uh, very interesting uh, part of english uh the verb see we see we use our eyes so uh, there are words which uh, pertain to our sight see look glance watch gaze stare there are so many of these activities that we do just simply with our eyes see is just see i mean okay i can see clouds in the sky i saw birds flying something yeah okay nothing in particular but when i say look i'm i'm wanting somebody to look or uh, direct his or her attention uh, to a certain thing or an object so look there look at this flower that is look or i uh, ha have a look at a certain thing so look can be used in these different ways but when i say glance or glance as the americans put it uh, that is a flitting uh, you, you can say uh, sight i glanced over my shoulder she took a glance at the boy and then turned so a flitting sight or a, for a moment somebody looked at something so that's a glance watch now watch is something which we do intently with intention i watched a movie i watched a play so all my abilities were directed or my senses were directed towards the play or the movie so i was watching it 
I was doing it deliberately. So that is watch. Gaze. Again, that is also something which we do with intention. It, it's done intentionally. But that gaze is not, it's different from watch. Watching is when you're hearing also. But, uh, or maybe hearing is not there, but watch and gaze are different. Like gazing at the stars. I gazed at the stars. I gazed at the flower as it bloomed. Sometimes it just happens, uh, you may be lucky, or you may see a butterfly emerge from uh, the pupil stage. So, I gazed as a new life emerged before me. So, you were so engrossed, that is gazing. But when you use the word stare, S-T-A-R-E, then it is rude. When you stare at somebody, it's rude. The boy stared at the girl. That's not a very respectable way to look at somebody. So these are the different forms which, in which uh, the activity that we perform with our eyes can be used. Now we come to the hearing part. Hear and listen. Again, uh, they are very, very different. Here is, I can hear anything. My fan is running. I can hear the sound. I heard the clouds thunder. I didn't want to or it was unintentional. Any sound that's happening, I heard bells ringing somewhere. So I didn't want to. I mean, uh, I am not against any sound. But yes, any sound that gets into my ears, I am hearing it. But when I say listen, again, it's something like watching. So when I listen to somebody, then I am listening with all my uh, sensibilities which are directed towards that particular sound. I listened to her song. It was wonderful to listen to her speech. So I heard something willingly. That is listen. Listen to me. Now when I am saying something, I will not say hear me. <laughs> I will have to say listen to me. Because hearing is not willing. It just happens, uh, you can say, without your intention. Now we come to hold and catch hold something i'm holding a ball it's there it's stationary or i held a pen in my between my fingers but when i say catch it's something like something was in motion and then i took it in my hands i caught the ball i had to catch the ball when it was thrown at me so catching is taking something in your uh, palms when it is being thrown at you or it, when when it comes to you but hold is you're holding it's there it's stationary it's stable over there another thing which i've noticed in my whatsapp groups when we wish somebody for their uh, when they got together as husband and wife we say happy marriage anniversary it's not marriage anniversary it is a wedding anniversary marriage is a relation it's, it's a relationship in which two individuals are tied for life. But the celebration of a marriage is the wedding. What we attend is a wedding. It's not a marriage. I hope I'm able to clear myself. So the, the, the customs, the rituals, the celebrations, whatever, these are wedding ceremonies. But marriage itself is a relationship. So when we have to wish somebody, it is happy wedding anniversary, not happy marriage anniversary. Marriage is there to last. Wedding took place once. The wedding took place once. So we celebrate its anniversary every year. But marriage is their relationship. So next time you wish somebody, don't say happy marriage anniversary, say happy wedding anniversary. Two more words which are often confused are than and then. Uh, my pronunciation was different. T-H-A-N is than. T-H-E-N is then. So than is used to compare two things and then is to follow something. Drink water, then go out. Drink water, then you can play. Have tea, then you may leave. But when we use than, I am taller than him. She is slimmer than Deepika. So, than is to compare. And then is something to be done after another thing has been done. 
so that was than and then my students often asked me in class ma'am can i drink water so i would laugh and say of course that is your ability can or you cannot that should be known to you you are not supposed to ask me can you drink water or you can't you can't drink water so when you have to take permission uh, then it has to be may i drink water may i go out of the class can i go out of the class you know whether you can go or you cannot go so uh, that is how i made them understand the difference between can i and may i you can do a lot but when you have to ask for somebody's permission it has to be may i may i go to drink water may i go to the washroom so it's not can i you can definitely but when you have to ask your teacher it has to be may i there and there t h e r e t h e i r i think that should be the last one to take because it's already 15 minutes so t h e r e is a place go there t h e r e go there or you will find the glass there it's a place that i am indicating but t h e i r is a personal pronoun it's their house t h e i r it's the house of the sharma so it's their house it's sharma's house so uh, their mother makes very good food two children three children their mother t h e i r so that was all for today i hope i've been able to uh, you know solve a lot of uh, misconceptions and doubts so hopefully um, i'll be seeing you very soon again and uh, again i'll repeat please do like subscribe and share my videos not for any other reason but i want people to learn correct english even if they are speaking whether they are speaking or they want to write it so uh, i hope my little efforts will work out so thank you viewers thank you subscribers hoping to see you soon uh, maybe this week only again and i'll be very thankful if you could uh, write in the uh, comments what would you like me to speak about uh, i have a few topics of course up my sleeve but it would be nice if you let me know what i should speak about in my next video so thank you and hoping to see you soon good night have a good day bye bye